Hello, Rustam here from Ace Isles, and welcome to my channel. I've created this channel to help you ace the test to get the perfect score you need that will allow you to pursue your dreams. And in this video, we're going to look at IELTS Writing Task 1, specifically a line graph description. And I'm going to walk you through five simple steps that you need to know to describe any line graph. Okay, without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's begin this video by looking at a typical line graph. So here's the line graph. And on the left, you can see the instruction words. So it says that you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. And uh, the line graph below shows changes in the amount and type of fast food consumed by Australian teenagers from 1975 to 2000. So you need to summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. And you need to write at least 150 words. So this is how a typical line graph looks like. So step one, um, spend some time to understand the graph. Okay, before you even start writing, you need to make sure that you understand exactly what the graph shows and what your task response should be, right? So always spend some time analyzing and understanding the graph. Okay, so now let's take a look at our graph again. As you can see, this line graph has a title. So always spend some time, um, you know, understanding the title if there is a title, right? So this line graph is about the consumption of fast food by Australian teenagers. So the three keywords here are consumption, fast food and Australian teenagers. So um, if you look at this line graph more carefully, you'll, you'll understand that it basically shows us how many times per year Australian teenagers consumed fast food, right? So what else do we know? We also know that there is three types of fast food uh, consumed. Pizza is the represents the, the blue line basically represents pizza. Fish and chips is the red line and uh, the green line is for hamburgers, right? So there's three types of fast food. What else do we have here? So we also have two lines. So a vertical line and a horizontal line or also known as axis, right? Vertical axis and horizontal axis. So what does the vertical axis um, show us? So it gives us the number of times um, they add fast food per year. So basically these numbers, 40, 60, 80, 100, stand for how many times per year Australian teenagers consumed, uh, you know, the fast food, right? And in, in the... And on the horizontal axis, you are given a time span. So it's between 1975 and 2000. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the year, sorry, it tells us that the years are in the past, which means, yeah. So what does this tell us? So this tells us that we're going to use past simple tense because these are all past tenses, right? 1975 to 2000 all happened in the past, so we need to use past simple. This is very important, guys. Before you start writing your report, make sure you, you know what tense you need to use. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my God, we don't have that much time in the exam to do all of this. I get it. But you won't be doing it as slowly as I'm showing it here, right? So once you learn to do this, it will literally take no more than 30 seconds of your time to study and understand the graph. But I do encourage you always spend some time doing this. You always, spe you always spend some time trying to understand and analyzing the graph because if you misunderstand it, you may screw up the entire writing and the result may be very, very disappointing. So it's better to spare some time analyzing the graph before you start any writing. So step two, paraphrasing the question. Begin your writing by paraphrasing the question. 
Paraphrasing basically means you say the same thing, but use your own words, right? So don't copy um, what's given in the question. Use your own words, keep the meaning the same, okay? Let's look at our question again. Now, here's the question. So the line graph below shows changes in the amount and type of fast food consumed by Australian teenagers from 1975 to 2000. So this is how I've paraphrased this question. So the graph compares the consumption of three fast food items by Australian teenagers between 1975 and 2000, right? So this paraphrased sentence alone makes up your first paragraph. So this is your complete introduction, okay? You don't need any other sentences here. Your intro is ready. So you can pause the video now to read it one more time. Now, step three is writing an overview. Now, as you've written your introduction, the next step is to write a clear overview. An overview is basically a summary of your main points. So this can be one or two sentences long. This is a very important part of your report. Don't forget about it. I recommend you write your overview right after the introduction, okay? If it's a line graph, there's usually a change over time, right? There's a change over time. So you need to write about the general trend. In other words, where the trend was upward or downward. So let's take a look um, at our graph again and see what trends it has. Okay, so next. From this line graph, we can clearly see that both the consumption of pizza here and hamburgers, so pizza and hamburgers increased, right? While the consumption of fish and chips, the red line, decreased, okay? So this is all the information we need to be able to write an overview, okay? So let me show you what I wrote. So overall, the trend for fish and chips was clearly downward. This is what I was saying, fish and chips. Um, so the, the red line. So this trend was clearly downward while the consumption of pizza and hamburgers, the other two lines, went up dramatically, right? So this is a complete overview. Of course, there could be other variations, but you don't need to overcomplicate things, right? Keep it simple and clear. So the next step will be to give the details. Step four, writing the details. So next, you need to write about the details. So this is basically gonna be your body, right? Body of your report. So this is the time when you need to closer look at the data, at the information given to you, and select only the important details. You know, present the information that is worth mentioning. Sometimes um, graphs could be too complicated, giving you a lot of data. Don't try reporting every single detail. Instead, focus only on the information that stands out, leaving out any unnecessary detail. The examiner also wants to see your ability to select important information and group data. So you need to show your ability to do this to the examiner, okay? So one way to group data is by finding similar patterns and also looking at the differences. So let's have another look at our graph and see how we can select and report the important information. In this graph, we can see that the trend for fish and chips followed an opposite pattern from the other two food items, right? So we can divide this into two separate paragraphs then, okay? So in body paragraph one, we can write about fish and chips. And then in the second body, we can write about pizza and hamburgers, okay? So I'd always recommend you to have two separate body paragraphs. One is not enough, okay? So let's see what we can say about fish and chips. So we'll begin with this downward trend for fish and chips. So here's what I wrote. So in 1975, Australian teenagers consumed fish and chips considerably more frequently than pizza and hamburgers. So you see a comparison here. 
The data shows that, on average, fish and chips were eaten 100 times per year. Despite some minor fluctuations in the first decade, this is the first decade between 1975 and 1985, so I'm talking about this period of time here. So, um, despite some minor fluctuations in the first decade, the pattern for fish and chips started to decline rapidly. Here, it started to decline rapidly after 1985 onwards and dropped to just under 40 times per year 15 years later, right? So, 1985, 15 years later is the year 2000. So, as you can see, it finished the year um, just below 40, okay? So, now I recommend you put the video on pause to read this paragraph one more time maybe um, and, you know, to process and understand what I wrote. So, if you still have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments or reach out to me directly, okay? So, pause the video now if you need to. Now, let's keep going with the second paragraph in which we need to write about pizza and hamburgers. So this time we're going to write about these two, pizza and hamburgers, which followed an upward trend. So um, this is an opposite trend, right? So we can begin um, the paragraph by saying, on the contrary, the intake of pizza and hamburgers increased sharply over the entire period. As you can see, there, there's been a sharp increase for both pizza and hamburgers. So, starting at around 10 times a year, the quantity of hamburgers eaten skyrocketed to over 80 times a year in 1985, quickly overtaking fish and chips in the next couple of years and reaching the 100 times a year mark in 1995 and finishing at around the same level. So, basically, I'm talking about this green line here. So, 1985. Um, so it, it reached over 80 and then quickly overtook, you can see here, overtaking fish. So it means it has been higher, so the consumption has been higher than that of fish and chips. So similarly, pizza intake uh, soared more than 10 times in the first 20, 20 years. So as you can see here, it started at around maybe 5, 7, I don't know and then it increased to over 80. So it's more than 10 times, right? In the first 20 years, leveling off at just 80 times per year in the last five years. So this is the period where it leveled off um, in the last five years at 80. So it did not change, right, in the last five years. Again, if you need time to read this, um, one more time, so please pause the video um, and now let me, again, if you need time to read this, you know, more carefully, please pause the video to read it. So this is the entire report, basically, as you can see, it's 191 words. So um, take some time to read this, pause the video if necessary. So, all right, as you can see, you know, this report has four paragraphs. Um, introduction, just one sentence. Overview, another sentence. So these are two separate paragraphs. I always recommend you write your overview right after the introduction. And then this is all followed by two body paragraphs where you basically give the details, okay? So the final step is checking. This is often ignored by many students, but I'd strongly recommend you spend about two minutes, so make sure you leave about two minutes at the end to check back what you've written. You can read your, um, your report uh, two times. So when you read it once, you check for any grammar or vocabulary mistakes, and the second time you check it, make sure that all the data you've presented, you've written, is accurate, right? So, to wrap up, there are five simple steps that you can take to write a report about any line graph. Let's recall them one more time. So step number one, understand the graph. Step number two, paraphrase the question. Three, write a clear overview. Four, write the details. And five, make sure you check your writing. 
That's all I have for, for now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more valuable content. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I'll make sure to answer them or reach out to me directly at the email um, given in the description below. Thank you guys and see you in my next videos.